first cast, little baby smooth hound, hopefully not the last fish of the day. But in this video, we are gonna go over the absolute basics of beach fishing. Right, today uh, we're at Shoreham Beach and we're going to get you out beach fishing on your own. In recent years, sea fishing has become a great passion of mine. Four or five years ago, I didn't know much about it. Since I started it, it's pretty much taken over my life. Uh, I do a lot of matches uh, and I've really, really got into it. So I'm hoping we can give you some of the basic skills to get out on your own and have a go. Now, what do we need to go beach fishing? We're gonna need a rod, we're gonna need a reel, we're gonna need some line, we're gonna need a weight, we're gonna need some hooks and we're gonna need some bait. All sounds very obvious, but if you do a quick Google search, it can become very, very confusing. For example, do you need to spend £1,000 on a rod, £500 on a reel? The answer is no, you don't. But you do need the right tackle for the job. With a rod, what rod do you actually need to go beach fishing in the UK? We've got two different types of rods. 15 years ago or so, everyone used to use quite big, thick, two-piece beach casters. In recent years, things have slightly changed. Some people still use them heavy beach casters, but now we have something called a continental rod. This is a three-piece rod, and they're generally a lot thinner and a lot lighter and slightly easier to use. So you want a continental three-piece rod. They quite often come in 14 or 15 foot, which is slightly longer than the typical two-piece beach caster. Um, these uh, Salt XTs, they do actually have a 12 foot version as well. Uh, I'm gonna be using the 14 foot today, nice and long, but they're very, very light. Just, they're just a bit more manageable, I would say than a big, heavy beach caster rod. Right, next up, we're gonna need a reel. Now, what reel do we need for fishing from the beach? So, you've got a multiplier reel or a fixed ball reel. That's your two different options. Because we're using a continental three-piece rod, you wanna be using a fixed ball reel for this. Today, we're gonna to be using a Shakespeare Cypre XT80. Now, this reel is it's sort of made for fresh water use, really, for your big sort of uh, barbel and carp fishing. In actual fact, the first time I used this reel was a few months ago in the River Trent with uh, James Roach, uh, and I caught a 14 pound barbel using this reel. Um, a few weeks later, I was using this exact same reel to make the pike fishing video with Dean Asprey. And both of them videos will leave a link in the description. Uh, now I'm using the same reel here on the beach. Uh, and we're using the same line, the same Berkeley 15 pound line. So it goes to show you can kind of um, multi-use your fishing kit. You don't need to keep buying a new kit all the time. But these are lovely reels. So we use a bigger reel for beach fishing because you can get more line on it because we're casting a further distance. It's kind of as simple as that. Uh, big reels as well, when you're winding in, it'll wind in faster as well. So we've got to beef up the kit. Just to show you an example of, if I was fishing down the local canal, doing a bit of waggler fishing, I'd be using something like that, a two and a half thousand size. So you can see uh, the size difference there. It's considerable. Uh, so a bigger reel for beach fishing. Uh, but this reel, as I've mentioned, I've done all this fishing over it over the last two or three months. These reels are under 40 quid, <laughs> which is like, which is like madness. Uh, and that has never let me down this reel yet. And we've caught some massive fish on it. Now for sea fishing, what type of line do you actually need? Well, 
there's two different lines that you can use. You have braid or mono. Now, braid is basically different fibres woven together um, which makes the line. A mono is made of a single bit of plastic, which is, a mono is basically, when you think of fishing line, uh, mono is the one that you're kind of thinking of. Now, for beach fishing, when you're getting started, just go with mono. We'll take braid out of it. We can speak about braid uh, in future videos, but to get started, mono is a bit more manageable, there's a bit more flex in it, um, and it's generally best to get started with. Uh, the only thing you need to think of is breaking strain. Now, for beach fishing, we're not going to go into uh, deep detail here, but basically you want to be using between 12 and 15 pound breaking strain. Sometimes people go beach fishing and they make the mistake, they think they need really, really thick line. I mean, really, you want slightly thinner line because a thinner line you can cast further and it's just nicer to work with. So 12 to 15 pounds uh, will get you started. It does not matter what colour it is for sea fishing. It makes no difference whatsoever. Some people like the fluorescent ones. Um, I mean, it shows up better in night time uh, when you're trying to work out what you're doing. Uh, it really doesn't make that much difference. We've got a rod. We've got a reel. We've got some line on the reel, so we're nearly there, aren't we? Right, we're gonna need some sort of a rig. Now, if you have, check out Angling Direct, I'll leave a link in the description or get down your local fishing shop. And basically, you can buy ready-made rigs. Now, that's the route that I would start if it's your first time beach fishing. Personally, I make all my own rigs and it is actually very simple to do, but, if you go and fishing for the first time, you don't want to be messing about with all that. You just want to clip something on, put some bait on, cast it out. Um, you know, the rigs are really good these days, the ready-made rigs, a lot better than they used to be years ago. But there is a lot of different rigs for sea fishing. So what we're going to do today is we're going to be using a flapper rigs. What does flapper mean? So these rigs, they come all curled up in a packet when you can get a, a two hook or a three hook flapper rig. Now, I'm gonna use a three hook flapper today. Uh, it might be better to start with a two hook flapper just because it's a bit more manageable. Um, but a three hook flapper has three hooks. And basically on one end of the line, you will have a swivel like that. Now on the other end of the line, you are gonna have a clip that looks something like that. Now that one, is the one that you're going to clip your lead onto. Right, so we're going to clip the lead on. Now, leads, what do you need? You want a breakaway gripper like that. Now, you'll see different colour ones. A yellow is a five ounce weight. Now, if you look on a fishing rod, it will have a weight on it. I think the one that I'm using is between 100 and 250 grams casting weight casting weight there we go that's the weight we're going to be casting now these yellows are 150 grams um so whatever weights on your rod it'd be sort of in the middle of that is the optimum casting weight um so 150 we're going to be using today a five ounce weight should probably do you for most beach fishing situations unless it gets really rough if it does get rough and you need a six ounce weight, they're the same as them, but they're red color. Uh, a four ounce is a blue and seven ounce is green, but the yellow ones are probably the best ones to get started. Now, we're gonna attach it to this free hook flapper rig. I'm gonna show you the rig in a minute. Right, so we found that end. That's where the lead goes on. On the lead, there is that. And we're just gonna bang. That is connected. It was as simple as that. Let's have a quick look at the rig. So, a flapper, a one down, two up. That's what I'm using. Now, what that means, you've got one hook, a hook length, right? That's a hook length. We call them snoods in sea fishing. So, you've got one snood going under the lead. So, this is going to be fishing on the bottom. See? You've got a hook there. And then, as you go up the line, you've got another snood there with another hook on now a two hook flapper is probably quite good to get you started i'm actually using another hook up the line there 
So we've got hooks going all the way up the line. That's what you connect your main line to and then you can go fishing. Just a quick note on hooks. What size hook do you need? Well, I would say a size two hook is probably the best sea fishing hook to get started with. A size two hook, you can catch a massive big fish or you can catch a small fish. You can basically catch everything on a size two hook. Now, if you're buying ready-made sea fishing flapper rigs, they're probably going to come with Aberdeen hooks. Aberdeen hooks, there we go, that's what they look like. They've got a long shank there, and that is a size 2. Um, and this is already made up, so you probably won't have to worry too much about that. Um, I'll tell you what is good on your ready-made rigs. You might have something like this, a little stop knot type thing with a little shiny sequin. Um, and that is to keep your bait in place, but we're going to look at that a bit more in a minute. You see these leads? They're called breakaway leads. They're probably come, they have all these flappy bits around like that. Now, what you've got to do is these little bits here, you just click it into place like that. See? And they're stuck like that. Now, when you cast out, it's going to go into the seabed. And these little wires stick into the seabed and this stops your rig from moving about. But when you want to reel in, they will come undone like that, right? And then you can reel it in. Really simple. If they ever get quite loose, you can just bend them a little bit more like that and they firm up. But that is a breakaway lead. That's what you want to be using for fishing off the beach. Oh, I've just got. To, I've just had to jump up. Basically, we've got Graham Maybe here, who is um, the angling development officer for the Southeast. Uh, he's going to do a casting lesson in a minute, but I think he's just caught a fish. So let's go and have a look. Gee, what you got? Got a nice little bass. Little first one, just a little tiny baby, but it's just nice to be out on the beach and having a go, trying to catch a few different species. So was that quite close in? Yeah, it wasn't too far out at all. No, you don't have to cast very far to catch these ones, Jimmy. Just, just past where the brakes are and things. And um, just a little, I think I had this one on a little piece of ragworm, tipped with a little bit of squid. So uh, there we go. Now, I'm ready to attach my rig to the main line. We're nearly ready to cast out, but stop what you're doing. We've got a bit of an issue. I told you earlier, you need to be using 12 to 15 pound break and strain line, right? You don't really want big thick line when sea fishing, as I said, you can't cast as far. But if you're using 15 pound main line on your reel, and you are casting a five ounce weight, which you need to do to hold the bottom, you've got an issue. That 15 pound line on the reel cannot cast a five ounce weight. It's gonna break the line. Confused? <laughs> Don't worry, there's a simple fix to this. Right, you need something called a shock leader. Now, a shock leader is a bit of line attached to your main line that goes down and attaches to the rig. Now, we are going to be using a tapered leader. Tapered shock leader, that's what we need, right. I know it sounds a bit confusing, but it's very, very important. For the shock leader, well, basically, you need about five turns around the reel before you cast, and that goes to your rig, and that takes all the pressure when you're casting, so then you can cast these five-ounce weights. The shock leader, I mean, these ones are 15 metres long and they're tapered. So what does tapered mean? Tapered means it's thin one end and thick the other end. Now, you get different strength shock leaders. Now, what do you need? So we're using a 150 gram weight, which is about five ounces, right? So that's a five ounce weight. Now, your shock leader has got to be 10 pound for every ounce of weight you're going to cast. So if you've got a five ounce weight, you need a 50 pound shock leader. Now, I use 60 pound shock leader uh, because this covers me for all of my fishing. Even if I'm casting a four ounce weight, I'll still be using a 60 pound shock leader. Um, so I would advise to get a 60 pound shock leader. Right, so let's tie the shock leader on. You don't need to learn many knots to go beach 
fishing, but this is like a really, really important one and you're gonna have to pick it up. We're gonna tie an Albright knot, which is one of my favorite knots in the world. They're fairly easy to tie and extremely strong. So we need our tapered shot leader, any brand will do. As you can see here, 15 to 16 pound. The thinner bit of line will be the first one coming off the spool here. Now this is our main line that's connected to uh, the reel. Firstly, we're gonna get the tapered shock leader and we're just gonna put it in two like that. So all we've done is fold it over. We're gonna get our main line. We're gonna put it up through the loop that we've made and we're gonna pull the main line down a bit. You can see you've got to keep everything sort of pinched with your hands. And now we've got this tag end of the main line. We're going to bring this back up. Now, we're just going to wrap around all these three bits of line, right? One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. You can see I'm holding everything together. If you let go of your fingers, it's all going to come apart. Nine, ten. So we've wrapped the main line around three bits of line ten times. Now the tag end is going to go back through the loop of the leader. The leader is the red line, remember. Right. That is ready to pull together. But really importantly, you must dampen this before you pull it together. Mono line will uh, burn when you pull it. So you need to put some saliva. You would normally put it in your mouth, to be honest with you. I've got a bucket of water here, so it's not quite so horrible. Now we're gonna pull it together. I'm pulling all the ends at the moment. And before I pull it really tight, I just like to give it a little pull. Just make sure everything's nicely together. There we go. Oh, that's never gonna break. So you've got a lovely, neat little knot. Now, we're gonna cut the tag ends off. You need a sharp pair of scissors, which we haven't actually got today. Now for this particular knot, we do want the tag end cut right down. Now what we're left with there is a very small knot, but extremely strong. You can pull that as hard as you want and it's never gonna go. So there we go. We have now connected our main line to our leader. We're pretty much ready to cast out, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie a, a quick link on to the shock leader, which is what we're going to attach our rig onto. For this, we're going to use a grinner knot. Now, a grinner knot we're using, if you've watched any of our other freshwater videos, uh, I pretty much use a grinner knot to attach any sort of hook or swivel, unless I need a hair rig in carp fishing or something. I pretty much always use a grinner knot. Uh, and we're going to quickly tie one now. The great thing about a grinner knot is, um, it's never gonna slip. If it slips, it's only gonna get tighter. Uh, so it's a really good knot to learn. Uh, you don't need to know loads and loads of knots to go fishing, um, but you do need to know a Grinner knot and an Albright knot uh, to go fishing in the sea. So we're gonna attach a, a quick link on now, uh, and it's gonna take about two minutes. Now we've reeled the shock leader onto the reel and we've ended up with this end of the shock cleaner. This is a thick 60 pound end, right? Now on this, we need to put a clip onto it, like that, and this is what we're gonna clip our rig onto. Bring the line up, plenty of room for this tag end. You want a nice long tag end for these grinning knots. Then we're gonna bring the line back down again then we're going to pinch it here. And then this tag end is going to go over two bits of line five times. Four. Five. It's, I'm doing this all a bit cock-handed. Right. And now we're going to wet the knot. 
wet the knot. We're going to pull the tag end a bit, get the knot starting to form, and then I'm holding the clip here, I'm holding the main line here, and we're going to pull it. That's it. Now we just need to tag off that. So that is now connected to the clip with a grinning knot. My favourite knot for tying on any sort of swivel or hook. Right, so when you're connecting your rig on, you're going to have a swivel like that. And all you need to do is connect it to your quick link like that. I've got a bite. Now, when you get a bite in sea fishing, it's a slightly different situation to freshwater because when the float goes under or the feeder rods going over when uh, freshwater fishing, you strike it straight away. Sea fishing is slightly different because you get a little knock. You don't need to strike it straight away. You can let it develop only for a minute or two, but quite often the fish is playing around with the bait so it, it probably won't have the hook in its mouth but if you just leave it a minute or two it should take that bait right in and hook itself right we've got two fish on one cast we've got another smooth hound slightly bigger than the last one i would say and something a little bit different i've got everything down in a bucket of water here so it's all fine for a few minutes bass graham has had a bass I thought I might get one. They're fairly easy fish to catch a bass. You don't have to cast far out. In actually fact, you can sort of overcast for them a little bit. Um, they're generally in nice and close, but a lovely bass. You've got to be careful. They're a bit spiky. You see that? That's a spike there. Um, beautiful fish though. Absolutely stunning colours. Right, so what sort of bait do we want to be using for sea fishing? We're going to keep it really simple today just to get you out started. Now, firstly, we've got, well, probably one of the most famous sea fishing baits you can use in the United Kingdom, the ragworm. You can buy these from your local fishing shop. If you've got an angling direct near you, pop in there and they will have some of these. Now, ragworm is a great bait i mean on the south coast we use it a lot in the summer but works really well in the winter months as well um so we're gonna put a ragworm on to our size two hook so pick a nice one here's one here now here's our ragworm we've got a fin tail end and then we've got the head the head's the bit that does have pinches in and can bite you I don't think they're going to come out for us today, but um, what I can do is cut the head off. I know it's a little bit gruesome, and then we're left with this bit of worm. Now, that's going to be too big for our size two hooks. So again, we're just going to get some scissors and cut a bit of the worm off. So that bit of worm that we're left with, This is our size two hook. Here's the worm. We're gonna just put it through and we're gonna thread it on like so. Thread it on, thread it on. Put the hook point through and just pull just over the top of the hook. There we are. That's how you want it. Now this little bit here your rig might have a little, like a little sequin and a little, a little rubber bit or a stop knot and you can pull that down. And what that sequin does, it stops the bait going up your snood when you cast. Can you see that? And it also adds a little attraction there as well. So we've got plenty of hooks showing. We've got about an inch of the worm coming down as a little bit of an attractor. It's going to wriggle around in the water. We've got our sequin pulled down, so it's not going to fly up the hook when we cast. That is going to catch us a fish, hopefully. 
What you can also use, which is a really easy bait to get started with, uh, it's a bit empty, this pack, but this is uh, squid. Now, squid, you can use squid from your local supermarket, but the problem is when you buy it from the supermarket, it's, it's ready for human consumption, which means it's been washed. So what you really want is unwashed squid, which you can get from your local tackle shop. Uh, this has all the, the juicy stuff, the goodness, the oils. Now, you wouldn't really want to eat it, but fish find that scent in the water. So we want all that horrible, oily stuff on there because uh, that's what's going to attract the fish to the bait. So that's a basic squid. I mean, it's also worth noting, when this pack's full, that's about 3 99 and it lasts for ages. Uh, you can actually break it up into little bits to four little bits if you want when you buy it and, and freeze it in four separate bits so it'll last you a lot longer. But I think it's about 3 99 for a massive pack of unwashed squid. Um, but we're going to show you how to hook it and how to use it. There's only a few left in here. We're going to get one out of the packet. Still a little bit frozen. So that's what a squid looks like. They come in different sizes. What we're going to do with normal pair of scissors, we're just going to cut some little strips off like that. We're going to cut a nice strip off like that. We've got a size two hook. And all we're going to do, we're going to hook it through there, hook it through again, hook it through again. In actual fact, we're just going to keep hooking hooking and we're going to keep hooking and we're going to do one more depending how long your squid is just keep hooking it on until it looks something like that again we've got this little stop bead bit here we're going to with the sequin we're going to pull that down so it doesn't come up the snood when we cast there we go We've got a little dangly bit just coming off, just to give it a little bit of an attraction in the water that's going to move about. Plenty of hook points showing. So we've looked at ragworm and how to put that on. We've, put, uh, we've got a little bit of squid and we've put that on the hook. Now, just to mix things up, you can also put a bit of ragworm and then tip it off with a bit of squid. So we've got a bit of a bait combo going on. That happens quite a lot in the sea fishing. You can mix different baits up. So we've got a ragworm already put on the hook. And then we've got a little bit of squid. And what we'll do is we're just going to keep hooking that bit of squid on. So now we've got a bit of rag with a bit of squid on as well, just to add that little bit more attraction. Now, as these videos progress and we go further along, we can look at lots of different baits. I mean, mackerel is definitely one of the best baits out there all year round, any sort of species of fish, really. Uh, mackerel's a brilliant bait. We'll look at how to put mackerel on in the future. And then you've got blow lug, you've got some um, a black lug, which are two slightly different things. We'll look at that in the future. Then we've got peeler crab, and there's hundreds of baits, in actual fact, that we can use for sea fishing. Um, but we're just messing about with a bit of ragworm and a bit of squid, and we're keeping it really simple just to get you out so you can have a go on your own. Right, we're pretty much set up and ready to rock and roll. Now, all we need to do is cast out. Now, we've got Graham Maybe here, who is the angling development officer for the South East. He's also the assistant manager for Carp Team England, so he should know how to cast. Let's go and see him, uh, and we'll get you a basic cast, and then we are fishing. Okay, so I'm gonna talk you through a basic cast here with a beach rod and a fixed spool reel. So it's called a fixed spool reel because the spool itself is fixed into position, and you've got the roller which turns around when you turn the handle and winds the line around the spool. The first thing we want to do when we're coming to the cast is make sure that we've got a drop of around about a metre or a metre and a half from the tip of the rod down to your weight. You do, basically, you don't want the weight right up next to the tip. Just one little tip to point out to people. With the fixed spool reel, we've got this lever at the top of the spool, which is the drag. And what that does is when we loosen it off, we can actually pull line out of the spool and that will lower the lead down. We also use it if you hook into a big fish and it's pulling really hard 
it can actually pull line from the reel there, acting like a shock absorber. Um, so two little tips really. If you wind the weight up too close to the tip ring, you can just loosen off the drag, lower the weight down to the desired length. So about a meter, a meter and a half. But just make sure always before you cast, your drag is done up really tight. And that's important because if you're holding on to the line like so and making the cast, if that drag is loose, the line can slip and could end up cutting your finger. So always before the cast, make sure your drag is done up nice and tight. There's three stages to what you're gonna do down here with the reel. Hold the, uh, the reel with two fingers either side of the reel seat here like so. And the first one is gonna be you put the roller to the top. And to do so, you just roll the roller around with your hand and have it so the roller comes to the top. Second stage is gonna be finger on the line. So we're gonna use your index finger, your trigger finger, to hold the line against the rod like so. And then the third stage is gonna be open the bail arm, which is this bit here, which goes around the, uh, the, the spool. And we're gonna open it up and it'll click into place. Now what that's done is when that bail arm's open, it means when I release my finger, the line will come off of the spool and allow the weight to go out into the water. So that's why we're holding the line against the rod there. So that's what we're gonna do with our hands. I'm now ready to, uh, to actually perform the cast. So I'm gonna just check behind me to make sure there's no one there to start with. I'm gonna bring the rod around slightly to the side. And I'm just gonna watch the weight as it goes behind me in the hooks to make sure it's not getting caught on anything. And then I'm gonna turn myself and face towards the water. And quite simply, what we're going to do is have the rod at 45 degrees up behind us. We're gonna slightly drop it back and then bring the rod forward. And when the rod reaches 45 in front, degrees in front of us, we're gonna release that trigger finger. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow the weight to fly out into the water. If you release it too early, the weight will go up. If you release it too late, the weight will go down. So it's just getting the timing right. And it's not about how hard you swing this rod or how much power you put into it. It's all about the timing and the technique. So I'll go ahead and show you a cast. So 45 degrees up behind me. I'm just gonna lower the rod bring it forward and release with my finger. There we go. So once it lands in the water, you'll see the bail arm is still open here. So what I'm going to do, that's the, the line is coming out. So we want to close that once it hits the water and then we can turn the handle to tighten down onto the weight and that's when it's ready to go into the tripod. So there we go. That's a basic cast, powder cast, a beach rod with a fixed ball reel. I think that's pretty much everything you need to get out beach fishing on your own. Just a quick note, if you are going to go sea fishing to catch fish to eat, I mean, we haven't done that today. Everything's gone back safe and sound. Um, pretty much all of my fishing I catch and release. But if you are going to take some fish home for the table, there are size limits in place to protect fish stocks. I'm going to leave a link in the description. So basically there is a size limit. So a fish has to be a certain amount of centimetres um, before you can take it home. Otherwise you have to put it back. Now keep an eye out, especially for bass limits, because that can change at different times of the year. I'll leave a link in the description uh, and it should all make sense. If you've got any questions about anything in this video, just hit us up on the Get Fishing social media accounts. Um, I'm on there all the time answering questions. Do hit us up uh, and we will try and get you out fishing on your own. If you would like to try fishing, and this all seems a little bit complicated, you can go to a Get Fishing event. Now, if you go to the link in the description, anglingtrust.net forward slash get fishing you can find an event near you freshwater and now sea fishing as well and basically you can turn up all the kits provided set up for you you even get an instructor uh, you get some free bait uh, do go and have a look on the get fishing website find an event near you uh, and then hopefully you can come back and watch this video, get some bits and bobs and get out and have a go on your own. We've, we've also got the Get Fishing Awards now, which is uh, you can take part at certain Get Fishing events. You can go through the Get Fishing Awards. Basically, you have to do it in three different sessions. There's a bronze, silver and gold award. So hopefully by the time you complete the gold award, you can get out on your own. 
Thank you for watching. Give us a subscribe on YouTube and we're going to be back very soon for some more freshwater and sea fishing videos.